in this day in history, this was an important one in a lot of different ways. Signaled the, the, the end of one era and the beginning of the next. December 27th, 2000, the year 2000. In the year 2000, in the year 2000. For the people who don't get that Conan O'Brien reference, <laughs> go on YouTube and type in the year 2000 Conan I miss, O'Brien. I miss that bit. I really do. <laughs> um, 17 years ago, today, imagine it's been 17 years. God, we're old. God, <laughs> oh God, I remember when we were talking about this too. I was like, oh man, did you see that episode? Uh, i going crazy. So the, the final episode of Transformers Car Robots aired in Japan, December 27th in the year 2000. Um, this was very significant in a lot of ways because... Car Robots was written as it could be part of the the Transformers G1 car t- continuity. It might not be. It, you know, it was kind of a gray area. Yeah. Uh, it, mind you, years later, it was confirmed to be part of the G1 continuity. But at that time, it was a gray area. And at that time, we didn't really have other continuities. We just had G1. Maybe if you want to count the splinter of G1, G1 Japan, G1 USA. Uh, we had G1, and then we had G1 Marvel. That's literally all we had back then. We had G1, and then we had G1 Marvel, and again, of course, again, the splinter of the UK continuity with the comics. We just had G1 moving forward. That's what it was. This literally signif- signified the end of that era and going into a new era, which would be the Unicron trilogy. And, f- you know, following, you know, and it's it, again, this, this was the end of the year 2000. It was December 27th. So this series was done, and it was a great series. It was, the, you know, Car Robots was the one that ushered back in uh, vehicles and, and licensed vehicles on that matter, uh, you know, using all these ideas of let's use that Beast Wars ball joints and put it on, on vehicles and do modern engineering. Um, and this was the last episode of that era then going into the new era of the Unicron trilogy. Now, granted... Granted, after Car Robots ended December 27th in 2000, um, Hasbro took time to fill in the gap, and they then dubbed Car Robots, released it here as Robots in Disguise, or as we know yeah. today as Robots in Disguise 1.0. Mm-hmm. Uh, it debuted in the year 2001 on uh, on Fox, which Fox got the exclusive uh, playing rights for because at the time it was done by Saban Entertainment. Right. Um, that was dubbing it. So it was a whole different dubbing crew, too, on top of that. It wasn't the dubbing crew we were used to up to this point with Ocean Group, with Beast Wars. Um, so it was it was the Saban dubbing group. And in all of 2001, we got, essentially, car robots here as robots in disguise. Mm-hmm. Japan, at the time, was kind of buying their time with the Web Divers series, which a lot of people were rumoring was going to be the next Transformer series. Like, oh, it's going to be... But it really wasn't. It was just, it was a Takara-created transforming robot series, but wasn't Transformers. Yeah. So, but, so at that time, you know, it was the end of an era, the beginning of a new era, leading into the Unicron trilogy, which would then be a whole new continuity, and that whole new continuity would, like, from that point on, two thousand, the late 2002... Um, going into 2006 into 2007, a good chunk until the movies, essentially, uh, would be the Unicron trilogy with Armada, known as Micron Legend, Energon, known as Superlink in Japan, and Cybertron, known as Galaxy Force. So this was the end of an era, and what a way to go, because this episode was a full action-packed episode. It pretty much ended with, uh, I mean, I'm going by the Japanese dub of it, not the American dub, because I watched it it all in Japanese when it first came out. Uh, It was kind of TFW's claim to fame back in the day, because they would get all the episodes right away, straight from Japan, in raw format, uh, and on their website to download. So, the episode pretty much was, you know, Galvatron, or or in this case, Devil Gigatron, as he was called. Devil yeah. Gigatron had his final power, and he's he's defeating all the Decepti- the Autobots or the Cy- the Cybertrons in this case. And Optimus Prime convinces, or in this case, Fire Convoy convinces God Magnus, look, we got to work together if if we're going to beat this guy. And they do their combination. They are getting their butts kicked in the center of the Earth. Um, 
Brave Maximus or Fortress Maximus, if you want to call him, but Brave Maximus is uses the power of the children and blah, 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 and the power of the core of the earth and da, 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 to give uh, all this energy to Optimus Optimus Prime or Fire Convoy. He gets the Godfire Sword, or as it was called, the Matrix Blade in the dub, mm -hmm. and beats down uh, Devil Gigatron, and he's captured a la like the Phantom Zone in Superman. <laughs> and brought back to Cybertron to be put uh, on on uh, on trial, and it was it was a big epic episode. Like you, you have to understand, up to that point in Transformers, uh, we had the big epicness of Beast Wars. We had the big epicness of the end of Beast Machines with the the final episode of Beast Machines, which was called Mortal Combat, which was a cra crazy not crazy. I think it was more called Mortal Combat. Yeah, I think it was, um, which was another crazy final battle slugfest and then we had this one too which was while it was short was also another final battle slugfest you know cell animated crazy episode and again it was the signifying the end of one era and the beginning of another that would that would pretty much signify Transformers' direction for the next five to six years right. and they would you know Aaron Archer would have a big part in that uh, with, with Armada and the whole play style and Again, beginning those early seeds into what would be the future of the brand even today.